Hi, everybody. Last month, when we went to go visit Forrest Fenn in Santa Fe, we got to talking a bit about Eric Sloan. Even though their friendship lasted just 10 short years, Forrest Fenn told me that he was closer to Eric Sloan than anybody, even from when he was back in high school. As Forrest Fenn spoke about Eric Sloan, I don't know what it was, but I could really feel how he felt. Maybe it was something about his voice or just the way that he spoke, but you know, you could just really get a sense of how he felt about him and how close that they really were. It was obvious how inspired Forrest Fenn was by Eric Sloan's energy. Eric Sloan painted 15,000 paintings and he restored approximately 22 homes and he still had time to write books. From 1940 until his death in 1985, Eric Sloan averaged one book per year. Even from high school days. Oh, okay. And he, he, could, he could go to lunch with me, go to dinner with his wife that night, paint a major painting a day, and write 47 books in, for, in, in 50 years. Forrest Finn said that Eric Sloan's one-liners should have been chiseled in bronze like those of Mark Twain's were at his home in Hannibal. Eric Sloan always said that he married housekeepers because whenever he would get a divorce, they would keep the house. I don't know, did you ever know how I met Eric Sloan? No. I was a friend of Armin Hammers who owned Occidental Petroleum. Mm -hmm. And his he owned in New York, he owned Nodler's Gallery and had the Hammer Gallery. And the Hammer Gallery was directed by his big brother, Victor, who, who I knew. And so they, we went to the Dutch Street Club in New York. They took me to the Dutch Street Club and they, Armin Hammer wanted me to handle Eric Sloan's work. And, and he was a contemporary painter, and I told him, that, you know, I wanted to deal with dead artists. I didn't want to deal with, with contemporary painters. And they said, okay, well, Eric needs a, a Western art gallery, and you're perfect for him, but, but I'm sorry, I just don't want to handle it. I said, okay, that's okay with me. So they took me to the Dutch Street Club one day. The Dutch Street Club meets once a week. And they had hundreds of people in this big hotel room. The tables were 12 I think 12 feet round, and they'd, they'd have everybody sit. To belong to the Dust Street Club, you have to be in the literature somehow, a ballet dancer, an opera singer, a writer, or in, the, in some kind of a cultural person, or mm -hmm. you couldn't belong to the Dust Street Club. And so I'm sitting at this table, and Armin Hammer's sitting here, Victor Hammer's sitting there, and there's a guy sitting next to me that I didn't know. And I was talking to him, and he's pointing out, there's Bob and Ray, there's Andy Warhol, and all around, all these, all these names I knew. I mean, one right out, hundreds of them at, at, this, at this luncheon. And I said, well, you must be in the literature somewhere. I said, I said what do you say? I'm, he said, I'm a painter. Oh, yeah, what's your name? Eric Sloan. And I said, they baited me. They put me... <laughs> But I'll tell you, I fell in love with Eric Sloan. I mean, there was absolutely nothing not to like about Eric Sloan. Forrest Fenn wrote $17 a square inch. He called it a personal tribute to Eric Sloan. He said it was more of a conversation between the two of them, and I would have to agree because you really get a sense of their close relationship when you read that book. On the inside cover, Forrest Fenn wrote, that Eric and him wanted to build a covered bridge, but their wives wouldn't let them buy a river. Even though I didn't know Eric Sloan personally, every time I read that passage, it just makes me smile. And of course, I started handling his work. I wrote a book called Seventeen Dollars a Square Inch. It's 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 about Eric Sloan. I, I tell people it it's more of a conversation than it is a book mm -hmm. because it's it's like me and Eric talking in. Well, when I read, I mean, when you say that, when I read the uh, thrill of the chase the first time, I could, like, hear you 
it was like you were, you know, I could hear your voice in your words in the book. And uh, it was just, I don't know, I, I could just picture you. I'm, I, I'm just thinking that a lot now. It, you know, I'm, this town is full of important writers. And they know how to research, they know how to write, everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. But there's one particularly, I won't give you her name, but uh, she's a wonderful researcher, a wonderful writer, everything is perfect. But her books are, are dull, I mean, just absolutely dull. And, and I told her one day that she should be writing the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> and she smiled, she thought that was a compliment. I mean, I, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I told my, I said, I hope I, I don't I hope I don't ever write in Sacramento. My theory is, uh, how, how do you know where the edge is if you don't go out there and look? Yeah. And these right, a lot of these writers are, are right down the center stripe, and I'm always out on the edge. You know? Forrest Ben made me laugh so many times during our visit. And I've written eleven books, and I've made up words in every one of my books. In my book, The Thrill of the Chase, I talked about courting my wife. And I said, everybody knew that she was too good for me. I said, but tenacity was never one of my shortcomings. <laughs> if, if the reader knows exactly what you mean, then who cares what the word is? Mm -hmm. That's why I made up words. Mm -hmm. I made a couple of words in my fashion book that I'm very proud of. And, <laughs> and I, don't know whether, I don't know whether anybody's ever read my fashion book or not. But, <laughs> Once in a while, somebody will call me and tell me I made a mistake, and I just agree with them. I mean, yeah. One of the stories that Forrest Finn told me about was going to lunch with Eric Sloan at the Pink Adobe. We'd, we'd go to lunch at the Pink Adobe or one of these other places but where they had paper placemats, and we'd sit there waiting for our meal, waiting for the waitress, and he'd sit there and doodle, and... I'd grab all those doodles. I would just try to grab some of them, but I'd, I'd grab them before they did. I, I may, always made Eric sign them, and he, he didn't much like to sign them. They were just doodles, and so sometimes he'd sign his name backwards or upside down or something. He could do all of those things. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Forrest Ben said that Eric Sloan told him many times he was going to write one more book before he died and he was going to call it 80. In the fall of 1984, Eric Sloan had finished writing his book, 80, and he had sent it to publication. It was supposed to coincide with his gallery showing at the Hammer Gallery in New York. Eric Sloan invited Forrest Ben to the Pink Adobe for lunch, and after they had finished ordering, he handed Forrest Ben this large brown envelope Forrest Finn opened it and he saw these pages of paper that were, you know, kind of a mess, he thought. They had copied and pasted, they had things, lines drawn through the words and all these corrections made and Forrest Finn thought that that was kind of a mess until he read what was across the top of the page. And it was the manuscript for Eric Sloan's autobiography. Forrest Finn said that it took him a long time before either one of them said anything. Eric told Forrest Finn, this is my life and I want you to have it. He said that he started writing it and was gonna call it 74, and then he was gonna call it 75, and then he was gonna call it 78. He finally finished it at 80. Forrest Finn said that when he spoke, he was able to finally tell Eric just how much it meant to him. They talked about the way their lives had changed since their younger days, and that how sad that they now found the rapidly passing weeks and months that are hurrying them to a life's final door. In his book, Forrest Finn wrote, I need to pause for a moment and say that Eric Sloan was very special a sensitive genius who was consumed from within by a fierce fire of artistic passion that manifested itself in a hundred different ways. In $17 a square inch, Forrest Fenn wrote that Eric Sloan gave himself a birthday party at age 80 because he was surprised that he had lived that long. Eric's show at the Hammer Gallery was a huge success. 
the next day he went to lunch with Robert Wagner and when they were walking back to the gallery they were in Manhattan standing at the curb waiting for the light to change Eric collapsed and died of a heart attack he was 80 years old Nine of Eric Sloan's paintings still decorate the home of Forrest and Peggy Finn, along with some of the antiques that used to be his. One of the passages that struck me in Forrest Finn's book was, he wrote, and now 22 years after Eric's death, I sit here past midnight alone with only the fire to know my thoughts. The purpose of this book is to publish the last written words of a man who was a mentor to me late in life and whose memory occupies a special spot in a warm corner of my mind where only the fondest of recollections are allowed. This belated effort fulfills a promise I made to him and he to me. I was really touched at hearing Forrest Finn talk about his friendship with Eric Sloan. And I realized that it was evident that no amount of years could ever take that friendship away.